my first time on the jury. And so I am kind of still trying to wrap my head around the like level of responsibility there is. Uh, it's kind of, this season is a bit different because there's a bigger jury, so my vote matters a little less. But we're also giving $2 million away, so it's like a lot more, I don't know, there's more gravity to it, it feels. It's more difficult than I expected. I expected to be on the jury in the first day to say, I know who I want to vote for. Like, they played the best game, and it's just so not that easy. Tony never stopped moving in this game. Uh, from day one at call, he, um, he never settled into a comfortable position. Uh, and he always was staying one step ahead of everybody else. Even, you know, with me, I remember I felt like we had an alliance and he was, that alliance for him was two days ago and he was already on to the new alliance. Um, so I felt like Tony was like a shark in the water who never stopped moving and always was like switching up the game and making other people like play with him rather than play with other people. It was super impressive. Like, it's, I mean, it's terrifying to be around, but it was super impressive. And he won all these immunities. Um, it's hard also to find a, it's hard to find a flaw with Tony's game. He, you know, dictated the pace of the game, he won immunities, and he managed to blindside people without them feeling personally got. He blindsided me and I remember going out being like, holy crap, Tony's a really good survivor player. And there are other situations where you get blindsided and you're like, I hate that person. So Tony's game is really impressive. I think Michelle did a great job this season of not appearing threatening, right? After the merge, it felt like everybody was bouncing from threat to threat to threat. It wasn't like there was a single alliance taking out another alliance. Uh, and in a season of winners, to be able to blend into the background and not ever emerge as that threat, I think that is more than just happenstance. I think that requires some like active maneuvering. And I think Michelle constantly, you know, um, constantly hid from that target and it's impressive. I think Michelle has described her path um, very well over the last, you know, 10 travel councils. I think at almost every single travel council, her story is, I'm not in on the vote. I don't know what's going on. Nobody tells me anything. I'm trying. Uh, and, you know, Michelle has tried really hard and she's had some successes. She's won a couple of individual immunity challenges. But if Tony has dictated the pace of this game, I mean, Michelle has been a follower. Uh, so I think with Michelle, it's, if I vote for her, it's a question of like, do I, do I want to value and reward somebody who tried her darndest but never really grasped the game? Natalie's path was super impressive. Uh, I came into this game being very skeptical of the edge twist. And when I got to the edge myself, um, I think I learned a couple things. One, I learned how hard the edge is and how somebody who survives out there for 38 days or you know, 35 days or whatever she did, you know, that struggle and that journey shouldn't be discounted. And then I also learned that like, Natalie was not just sitting on her butt waiting to go back into the game. Natalie was working perhaps just as hard as Tony was working in the game, but at a different game. I mean, she influenced so many votes this season, but sitting on the edge. Like she gave Sarah the steal a vote. Um, you know, Sandra the idol, the Houdini to Jeremy. Uh, she, she worked harder than anybody else at the edge. She's super likable. And then she did exactly what she needed to do when she got back in the game. She survived. She bought herself an immunity idol. She won immunity. Uh, she, she did what had to be done. And so, oh, she found an immunity idol. Um, so Natalie in many ways also played the perfect game, but that perfect game started on day two. And you can't discount the fact that she did get voted out of the game. Like that's a big flaw. She was the first person voted out from her tribe. If I was going to vote for Natalie, um, it would be because on a season where there's an edge of extinction, she played it perfectly. Given the hand that she was dealt on day two, sitting on the edge, uh, I don't think she could have played a better edge game. Uh, and then the other reason I would vote for Natalie is I think she's a great person. I think she'd do good with the money. I think she's friendly. Um, all these things like people, people on juries I feel like often are like so focused on strategy and game and that all matters. But then there's also just an element of like, I have to give $2 million to somebody and I want to feel really good about the person I give it to. 
Uh, and if I want to go and get a beer with any three of those people on the jury, or in the final tribal, I'd probably choose Natalie. And that counts for something. I literally feel right now like I'm deciding if I like an apple more or an orange more. Uh, it's so difficult because I think Tony was the best apple he could be and Natalie was the best orange she could be. So I'm almost, I'm almost stuck right now thinking, what do I need from them to help me make this decision? If I, if I know they're delicious apples and delicious oranges, I feel like maybe it's just on me to decide do I like apples or oranges more. Um, so I'm really struggling with like, how do I, how do I do this vote? I don't want to sit the final tribal and end up judging the twist. I want to take the twist for what it is and judge the way that people dealt with it. Uh, but it's, it's so hard, it's so hard. I'm realizing, yeah, sure, I can make the case for both of them, but actually now it's on them to make the case for themselves. So I'm waiting to hear what that case is from them and I'm expecting myself to make a seat of the pants decision.